Hable. It's the middle of a pandemic, but we are in Gibraltar for the day. Uh, there are strong restrictions in place, but we are freely able to travel. So let's go explore this tiny little British territory in the Mediterranean. First stop is the Morris Castle. We're in it now. Uh, this is like a tower castle that goes back almost a thousand years, maybe more. Has been captured um, and rebuilt by both the Spanish and the Moors. And of course, is now maintained by the British. Ton of history in here. We're going in the World War II tunnels. Here we go. Gibraltar actually had a large role in World War II um, and they evacuated a lot of the civilians to Gibraltar in order to fill the territory with British military. Uh, and one of the things they did is dig or fill these tunnels um, with a lot of wartime supplies. Check this out. Uh, today there's miles and miles of tunnels within the rock here. Uh, however, only some of it is open to the public. Um, like this one right here that we're in. They've uh, reconstructed um, some of the scenes in these tunnels. So we as visitors now, you know, 60, 70 years after World War II can imagine what it was like. There's hospital beds, doctors running around, um, materials going in and out. It, it was like an underground city of sorts. After 500 meters of walking through the tunnels, uh, we came out in an area named Jack's Balcony. Uh, and you can imagine, looking out at this view, how the soldiers would sit here uh, during World War II to, to monitor enemies coming upon the shore and, and how they might act when they saw something running in the tunnels and the chaos and the preparations that would ensue. Stepping back outside, uh, we're gonna continue ascending on foot up the mountain um, to see the next attraction. Sure enough, there are monkeys, macaques. Look at this. What's really amazing about these monkeys is how they'll just sit here, totally accustomed to humans, uh, and not be bothered or scared by us. They're not really aggressive because people don't carry food around here anymore, uh, but they will just do their normal thing all day and not worry about us. Here he goes. St. Michael's Cave, by far the most popular cave in Gibraltar. Uh, as a caver, it's something of a disappointment. It's such a pretty cave, so decorated, multiple levels, but it's filled with pavements, lights, electricity. It's developed, it's a show cave. Nonetheless, it's, it's something that is definitely a must see when visiting Gibraltar. We're on the uppermost ridge, uh, just past the sky deck, heading to the, the Douglas lookout. Uh, the weather is good on the west side, but from the east, there's a ton of fog blowing in and strong winds. So we'll see what it looks like uh, as we get to the top of these stairs. We're at the start of a trail called the Mediterranean Steps. And as we cross over from the western edge right now, to the eastern edge, the wind all of a sudden picks up and starts howling. We're gonna be going down these steps and should break through the cloud layer shortly. And we should have amazing views once we get below this, this blowing fog. Downtown Gibraltar, uh, busy, traffic, noise, people. Well, 
we just left Gibraltar. Uh, we just went through immigration customs. We're now back in La Línea de la Concepción in Spain. We had a great time. Uh, some concluding thoughts on Gibraltar. It is a small country. It's British and Spanish mixed together. Uh, there's things to like, like the baboons, the, the limestone is something that was really pretty. Uh, the plants, the town is exciting. Uh, at the same time, it is kind of a haven for rich expats, tax-free stuff, uh, wealth. I don't know, it feels somewhat artificial. A local we talked to who's lived there all his life said love it or hate it. Some people are born and grow up there and they leave and never come back. Uh, others stay there all their life. Uh, they don't want to go anywhere else. Uh, regardless, it's a place that's that's worth visiting to see it. Decide for yourself. Gibraltar, September 2021. Awesome.